if the dogs along the road bark at you you don't bark back at the dog so that is what i think uh, that if many people might just tell me what you're doing is rubbish and utter waste of time i just ignore sometimes because i have to do it because i know what i am doing is right so that is what keeps me going Hi, I'm Fraser Andraj from a little village called Ambajini, situated in Margaon, which is in South Goa. And uh, I have been in this lovely Andraj family since the past 28 years. By qualification, I'm a pharmacist, but by uh, birth, I am a heritage enthusiast. I'll share with you an interesting story of mine. You know, as a child, I was at my maternal place in Chernabatni, in uh, close by to Kolva, and uh, there, for a reg- any for an if any child was at home, generally if a visitor came to your place, what would they get for a child? They would generally get something like sweets or toys, maybe. But in my case, it was never toys nor sweets. It would be things like other utensils and agricultural implements that I always loved since my childhood. So that is the reason I don't have any toys from my childhood. Okay, I have all these pots and pens that I collected right from then. Collection thing came into picture only in 2012 when I visited the Prince of Wales Museum situated in South Bombay. and uh, there when we went we saw a couple of things on display especially the crockery and some furniture that were there and uh, my dad started telling me you know we have similar things in our ancestral house and i said okay i had never seen them before and at that point of time probably even if i had seen and never paid close attention to these because they were probably always there and never i, I was never bothered in you know otherwise understanding their worth and when i came back from the museum back home from bombay that is the time i started digging into my own house and my own loft of my ancestral house and started discovering or rediscovering things that i had never ever seen before for me the sentimental value was more important than how much it was in terms of money so that was when i started uh, preserving anything and everything that belonged to goa one one during one morning i went to my family chapel outside and happened to see a a box or a bag i can't recollect but full of old statues that were just kept at the door outside the chapel and i came home and asked my asked my grandmother i said why did someone keep a bag full of statues outside our chapel and then i got this answer from her saying that you know if people didn't want religious statues they would either burn them at home or they would keep them at roadside crosses or chapels so that they deteriorate by themselves since they were blessed they could not be disposed of anywhere so they would just keep them for nature to take its toll on them or they would burn them and that is the time i thought okay if this is happening in my village of ambaji what would be happening in the whole of goa for that matter and in the whole of the world but since i could not tackle the world i said at least goa let me look up take care of and i directed myself towards religious art because of this incident uh, you can see this casket here with a cross and inside you see this little baby jesus so he strongly represents images of bal krishna okay so images like this just like those in hindu families given at the time of weddings to the bride especially in the brahmin and the kshatriya community in the hindu families uh, this same practice was observed even in catholic brahmin and kshatriya families 
where at the time of marriages you have the bride being gifted an image like this in the hope that she would conceive a boy child very soon here is an ivory and if you look at it closely you have typical indian jewelry like the waist bands the anklets and the bracelets okay uh, and it's shown uh, laid on a mattress uh, lined with gold gallon or gold thread okay and the casket is otherwise made in silver but this piece uh, is not part of the wedding trousseau but rather a part of the nativity set used for christmas with the a uh, bed which is called as the kamanda sabrisyo this is the bed a uh, uh, four poster bed made in rosewood and the flowers made of silver with a golden dot in the center representing local flowers from goa called as parijat so parijats are local flowers used in hindu rituals and pujas but uh, interestingly shown in a christian uh, piece here with uh, again with velvet cushions and a pillow and a silver crown adorning the uh, headboard of the bed the rest of the decoration is all made in crochet and uh, embellished with gold uh, gallon gold thread also a uh, 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 important thing here if you see is the cutwork in the wood which is inspired from the mughal jali work okay so this kind of work is a very islamic where you see cut works generally done in stone in marble if you look at the taj mahal you will see similar things so this is the jali work uh, that has been inspired by mughal works uh, my collection includes uh, pieces of christian art from the early 17th to the first half of the 20th century and how did i get these pieces so some of these pieces came through dealers antique dealers the others came from different families who would want to sell these things and i got uh, in touch with these families either uh, my friends who introduced me to them that's how i got to know them and they offered me things It was not a very easy and a smooth uh, journey uh, as a collector and as a heritage enthusiast I would say to uh, to acquire and collect these things in my home. So there were people who, who came and uh, told me Fraser you're collecting scrap. You're a scrap dealer. They would call me a scrap dealer. They would call me you're wasting they would say you're wasting your time on things that you uh, that have no value absolutely. and what what junk people are disposing is that you are collecting and you are completely uh, doing something that is a whole waste of time and is nothing of great importance to society and i always told them see i know what i am doing and i would continue doing it so i i will listen to you but it does not mean that i will implement what you are telling me to i uh, i can't stop you from saying what you are saying but i can stop myself from listening to you is what i would tell them and i that is how i kept doing it uh, uh continuing what i was doing so as far as my uh family is concerned uh they have always been very supportive uh, at least in the initial years in terms of the financial assistance because at that time i was not earning so i i had to mostly depend on them for uh for buying things and uh they have helped me a lot in terms of financial support uh since the beginning but uh, i was never motivated to do more in this area or encouraged to do better in uh, this field of collection of antiques rather it was something that they looked at whenever i got a new piece they said oh there is another addition to the house and it's more, it's getting more difficult for us to live in and sometimes they, i will get to hear okay one fine day you will have to leave the house to accommodate all your collection and there won't be space for us to stay in so all these things uh, are going on but then i i know that i have a purpose uh, intended and why i am doing this and definitely is not a waste of time
because today with something something called as simplicity that is popping in which is a good thing in the church but in the name of simplicity the elaborate decoration of the church that already exists is being uh, discarded because they say we don't need extra and unnecessary embellishments of the church or decoration that is not needed and there was in fact one priest who told said to me if god is there in your heart you don't require art so these were the words that i got to hear from a lot a uh, quite a few people which is very disturbing at times for me as a uh, as an enthusiast trying to safe uh, safeguard the uh, religious heritage both the tangible and the intangible mm-hmm.